up ninjas, the Guitar Ninja here, and welcome to another Riff of the Week. We have released a backing track, a beginner riff of the week, an intermediate riff of the week, and now it is time for the advanced one. In this one we're going to have a look at a slightly unusual finger tapping exercise, and a little bit of a scale run inside the C harmonic minor scale. So in this exercise, we're doing an unusual finger pattern in our C harmonic minor scale. We're actually starting on that harmonic minor or that major seventh note and not our root when we do the first two finger taps. The great thing is these are the same taps. Now, I am holding just a root note before I go into that. So the first note is just eighth fret on the first string. And I'm gonna start that with my middle finger and not my index so that I can then start on seven for the tap afterwards. Now because I'm holding the plectrum, I'm going to want to use my middle finger on this hand to do the tapping that this hand's going to do. Okay, so after holding that note, do, 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 I then, I'm going to start on 7, we're going to come down on 8 with the middle, 10 with the little, then 11th fret with the middle finger of the other hand. There are hammer-ons up, so... From that run up, we're then going to pull off with the middle finger and the little finger, but we're going to keep both the index and middle on with our normal fretting hand. So we get this. Okay, so it might be worth just practicing that bit by itself for a second or two. Because the temptation to take that middle finger off or to take it off whilst you've put the other fingers on is quite high. So make sure we run up and then just back to that middle finger can take a few runs. Okay, so once we've got that, the next thing you want to do is then we're going to hammer on up on 13. So this hand's going to move up two frets and hammer on. And then we're going to pull off of that and then we can finally take that middle finger off. So, to demonstrate that, we've got the first bit. Then up to 13, pull off, and then our middle finger. So that full run slow. And then at a faster speed. Notice how the 13 is being kept on slightly longer than the other notes. So we've got this do 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 do. So we've got that slightly longer 13 just to give it that more musical rhythm and pattern. Once you've managed to get that down, the great thing is the next section uses that same tap, but instead of saying, playing the eight first, we play the seven first. We get this. Boom. And there is the main tapping exercise. From there, we're then gonna play the eight again. And we're going to take that same tapping pattern, but we're going to move it up a degree of the scale. So we're moving up a degree of the scale means we're going to then play the same spacing, the same timing, but the spacing fret-wise is different. So we're not going up a semitone and playing the same fingering, the same frets, but we are playing that same pattern within the scale. So we're going to start on the 8 instead of the 7 this time, and we're going to go 8, 10, 11, and then 13. That's when we're then going to run back, so off, off with the same fingers, and then come up to the 15 to do that. So here it is, slowly. So as you can hear, it's got a similar pattern, but it does sound a little bit different. So we're now using our ring instead of our middle finger on our normal fretting hand. So we've swapped there, and then we've got this tone spacing with our notes on the picking hand. So those first three sections, all of the tapping section together now looks like this. So from that tapping section, 
We're then going to come up and do this 11, 10, 8, 10 twice. And they're just doing that. They're just quarter notes. That's actually the speed it's played in the exercise. So this is like a little bit of a break between the tapping and then our scale run that we're about to do. Now I will quite often when I finish that pull off exercise fit in a sneaky little 10 as a hammer on to get back up to that 11. It's not intentionally in there but I enjoy doing it. So you've got the option to throw that in or not. So after that last tap. Notice how I just threw that hammer in. And then finally we have our harmonic minor scale run. So we're going to start up on our C root up here on 8th fret on the 6th string and all we're doing is running through that scale in one octave and then back to the 7th. But notice that pattern. It's the same idea as our finger tapping exercise. So that third note from the end is a slightly longer note. From that scale run, we're then going to just move up that one fret back to our root, and we're going to play it again in the next octave. Now be aware, because of the tuning of the B string, our last two notes don't feel like they're the same shape, the same octave, but they are. So instead of playing it, we're going to have to come up an extra fret's worth in that second shape. It then repeats that second octave a second time. And then again, just to round everything off, we want to finish on our root note, so we're going to go back to that 13. So that last run, all together, fairly slow, is like this. So now we've broken it down into each section, Feel free to look at the parts of the video that you need. I'll make sure that there are timestamps in the description to help you out here. Break it down, get it together, and then have a go at playing along with this section now, which will be a full playthrough of it once again. finger tapping exercises, these scale runs, the theory behind them and therefore what you need to use these when improvising and writing for yourself are all available on the Guitar Ninja Academy if you're not already on there. If, they, if you are on there then you can check these out under the courses on the intermediate and advanced areas for the scales. And if you are watching this on YouTube, obviously hit that subscribe and the bell to know when the next Riff of the Week video comes out. The backing track video is already live, so you can have a go at playing this over that backing track. It loops through the rhythm quite a few times, so you can throw this in. The intermediate section with arpeggios and the beginner section with the minor pentatonic are also available, so you can check those out. Even if you're advanced, it's sometimes good fun to get the more beginner things in as well, so that you can then play all of that over the backing track and have fun with it. Thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed this and I will catch you in a new video soon. Bye!